Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Bro here, hope you're doing well, and in this video we're going to be discussing overloaded constructors in C++, and at the end of this video we're going to be creating a project where we're going to be ordering some pizzas, so let's get into it. Before you reach the end of this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that we together can challenge and defeat the mighty YouTube algorithm. Hey everyone, so this video is dedicated to overloaded constructors, and just as a quick reminder, a constructor is defined as a special function that is automatically called when an object is instantiated, and this is useful for assigning arguments to variables right away when we create an object of some sort. So a good example of this would be pizza objects. Pizzas have varying amounts of ingredients. So I have, for example, four different pizza constructors here, and this is legal. You can reuse the same constructor name as long as there are different sets of parameters set up. So for the first constructor, I have four string parameters set up, a bread, a sauce, a cheese, and a topping. The third just has three, a bread, a sauce, and a cheese then two, a bread and a sauce, and lastly, just a bread. So we can create pizza objects, and we will use a matching constructor when we instantiate an object, depending on how many ingredients we send our constructor. So let's actually work on a program where we're going to construct some pizzas and order them. So to begin, let's create a pizza class. So class pizza, but make sure you spell it right, because I didn't. And then we'll want to make these members public so we can access them from our main method. So we'll create the first pizza constructor. Honestly, I shouldn't have deleted everything, but too late, I already did. So we'll pass in a string bread, string sauce, string cheese, and string topping. And then what we'll do is just assign these values right away. So this bread equals whatever bread we receive. And we'll do the same thing for sauce. Cheese. And topping. All right, now we'll actually want to declare these variables. So we're going to do that before our constructors. So string bread, but we're not going to assign them. String sauce, string cheese, and string topping. All right, so this is our first constructor, but I misspelled sauce, there. So this is our first constructor. We can actually create a, another constructor with different parameters. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. We're going to get rid of our topping. And then we'll get rid of this line too. We'll copy this and make another constructor. So this one's just going to be bread and sauce. And the last one is just bread. Okay, we have our constructors made up. So let's create an order function. Maybe we'll call this order pizza. And this doesn't return anything, so we'll put void here. All right, let me think of something. Okay, I thought of an idea. We're going to display a message that says, here is your, then list all of the ingredients that are not empty and then just add the word pizza at the end, kind of like somebody's delivering it to us or we're delivering it to somebody. So within our order pizza function here, we will just see out here is your, and then the next step is we're going to check to see if our bread is not empty. So if bread dot empty function, but we're going to put the not logical operator here. So if our bread is not empty, what we'll do is see out whatever our bread variable is, and then maybe we'll just add a dash after it. Now we're going to do the same thing for sauce, then cheese, and then, what was it, topping at the end? Yeah, so if sauce is not empty, we'll display whatever the sauce is. 
Same thing for cheese. And lastly, topping. All right, and then we'll just add the word pizza at the end. So C out, pizza. But maybe I should turn this last one into a space. Then end of line. Okay, we're good to go then. Let's construct some pizza objects. Now to instantiate an object, we first need to list the class as the data type. So this is going to be a pizza object. And you can see that we have it right here for the class name. So next we need a name for this pizza. Let's call this maybe first underscore pizza. And then we can pass in some ingredients as arguments. So let's pass in a type of bread. So maybe thick crust and let's pass in a sauce. I'm not sure what the standard sauce pizza uses. It's some sort of red sauce. It's a mystery to many. And then what about mozzarella? I'm probably misspelling that. I always do. And then, you know what? That's it. Let's just stick with these three ingredients. And then we'll call the order pizza function. So we'll type in the name of our pizza first underscore pizza. And then we will order pizza. And let's run this. Okay, here is your thick crust red sauce mozzarella pizza. Now let's create a second pizza with different ingredients now. So pizza, we'll call this second pizza. And I want flat bread and I don't know, Alfredo. And that's it. And then we will order our second pizza. So second underscore pizza dot order pizza function. Here is your flat bread Alfredo pizza. Now that's one of the benefits of using overloaded constructors is that they allow us to instantiate different objects with varying arguments. And this works great for constructing pizza objects because pizzas can have varying different types or amounts of ingredients depending on the pizza. So for the first pizza, this has three arguments and the second one has two. Now, if we were to take these out and we only had this one, constructor that needed four ingredients, well, this actually wouldn't work anymore because if we were to construct a pizza, we need at least four ingredients. But if we put these back in, we can have between one to four ingredients, but you know, you can have more than this too. You could have a pizza constructor with five ingredients, six ingredients, so on and so forth. Well, that's the basics of overloaded constructors. So if you would like a copy of all the code here, I'll post this in the comments down below. If you're looking for additional practice, then your assignment is to create a set of overloaded constructors and then post it in the comments. But yeah, that is the basics of overloaded constructors in C++. Hey you, yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.